Hello, dear friends. This is Pastor Nick Keller. We thank you so much for taking time to listen to today's podcast. We're so excited about what the Lord is doing here, and we're so very thankful for these dear men of God from Pine Valley Baptist Church, willing to herald the Word of God, God's infallible truth. If you don't have a home church, we'd like to invite you and see what God is doing here at Pine Valley Baptist Church. Now, here's your preacher for today. Jason White with Pine Valley Baptist Church. And I want to talk to you today about uh, the Good Samaritan. And we've all heard this story, and and most of us has read this story. And I'll, I'll tell you, I was, I was reading it the other other day, and I was doing a study on it, and it never really stood out to me the way that it did. And uh, I would like to share that with you guys today. So we're going to start in Luke chapter 10, verse 30. Luke chapter 10, verse 30. And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him and bound up his wounds and pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence, and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will pray thee. And the Bible goes on to say in verse 36, Now, which... Now of these three, thinkest thou, was a neighbor unto him that fell among thieves. I was reading this passage, and I've read it many times before, but I didn't really pay much attention to the people who passed by the man who was laying wounded on the side of the road. If we look back to verse 31... And it says, And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Now I want you to notice it says, A certain priest. A priest. This is someone who who worked as a priest in the temple, say. And you know, you think about this today in in modern times, but this, this guy right here, he was a priest. He served God. But not at this moment in time. Maybe he was too busy thinking about um, what he had to do on the way to the temple. Or maybe in modern day terms, what was he doing on the way to the church? We saw someone in need there. But instead of helping or offering to help, we are caught up in our day, our busy lives. And we pass by not helping a brother in need. And it just kind of blew my mind to think that there was a priest that saw the man and he still, he passed by across the street on the other side of the injured man. Now, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I know that may seem strange to think that uh, a man of God or, or a man uh, serving uh, God as a priest would dare to pass by someone hurting, someone injured, someone going through something, and they see it, but they're just too busy. But i got to get home. You know, I, uh, supper's waiting on the table. Or I, I, I've just got to run to the store, and somebody else will. And, and maybe too much, we depend on someone else to. And we don't take the initiative upon ourselves. Last year, our theme for the year, our uh, for for our church was upon me, taking it upon me. And 
that's not what happened here in this case. And uh, it just kind of blew me away. And not only that, we look and it's the third, the second guy who passed by. It says, and likewise, a Levite, a Levite. Now, a Levite may not have been uh, being of the family, particularly of Aaron necessarily for that family of Aaron was alone, was the priesthood reserved. But these Levites served as assistants to the priest. It was their duty to keep the sacred utensils and the temple clean, to provide the sacred loaves, to open and shut the gates of the temple, to sing the sacred hymns in the temple, and to do uh, many other things. But as we see here, this Levite, when he was at the place, he came and he looked on him. He came and he looked on him. But he still, just like the priest, he passed by on the other side. Now, that's sad to say. But many times in our churches today, if you think about it, how many of us are so caught up in our lives or our our positions or, or what we may be, our duties in the church, we fail to see our brother that's in need. We're so busy making sure we do this and this and this, we fail to see the countenance that has fallen on a brother or on a sister. Instead of taking and tending to their needs or, hey, can I, can I pray with you for a second? Can I pray with you for a moment? Or seeing a need in church, seeing a need in a, someone on the street and refusing or failing to meet the need. Today, in the society that we live in, everything is so busy. And everybody's always, if you not noticed, everybody's always caught up in their phones. You go out to see, eat in a restaurant, and what do you see? People aren't even talking to each other anymore because they're so caught up in these devices. It's become quite addictive, uh, and, and it's a shame. But the, the thing that we need to, to see here is we need to assess our lives and our daily basis, things that we're doing, and how many people are we passing by? How many people do we are are we able to even meet the needs that they have? Are we able to tend to the wounds of this individual? We know someone is hurt and they're suffering and they're going through something. But yet do we stop and think about them long enough to shoot them a text or to call them on the phones that we stay so occupied in? Are we able to say, hey, I'm thinking about you. I, I, I know you're going through some things. Would you like to talk? You know a family's struggling. And you have the means to be able to help them in a way financially. Are you going to do it? Or are you too busy? And God forbid we be like this priest or this Levite who knows better. Who knows? We know better. God has, has taught us and is teaching us. And He has taught us through His Word to take care and to have compassion on one another. And it's a shame that that doesn't happen in our lives on a daily basis. We get too caught up in ourselves. And that's a sad, sad place to be. Now, if we look here at the Samaritan, this Samaritan, as he journeyed, he came where he was. And when he saw him, look what it says. He had compassion on him. The Samaritan had compassion on him. We were doing a Sunday school lesson um, currently. And uh, over the past couple of weeks, it's been about having compassion on one another. Sometimes we can get offended easily or we might wear our feelings on our sleeves or something may take place and because of circumstances or situations... We lose compassion for one another. Maybe someone's burned us in the past and we're not so quick to be compassionate upon someone else because we think this or we think that away. But God help us. We need to have compassion on our fellow brother, on our fellow man. We need to be more compassionate. We need to have burdens for those brothers and sisters in our church. We need to be burdened for what they're burdened for. We need to be helping to heal their wounds. You know what it's like to be injured and wounded in life. And you know what it means 
for someone to take time out of their busy day to show you a little kindness and compassion, to let you know that they're here for you and that they're, they're praying for you and that they love you. This man, this Samaritan, unlike the Levite and the priest, had compassion. He went to him, it said, and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast. Upon me, upon himself, did he take this man, placed him on his own beast, and he brought him to an end, and he took care of him. Lord, help us to be able to be more like this Samaritan in our lives on a daily basis. It doesn't matter what the world says. It doesn't matter what the world is doing. And the people have burned us in the past. And I tell you, brothers and sisters, I've been burned in the past as well. But I refuse to allow that to dictate how I have compassion on my fellow brothers and sisters. I try to live my life as when we see a need, we feel it. That is what God wants us to do. He, he's given us abilities and, he, he, and He's blessing us maybe financially. That if we see a need, we feel it. We see a need and we feel it. And this Samaritan, he, he saw this need and he went above and beyond. And he took him to the inn and he took care of him. And when, on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him and whatsoever thou spendest more when I come again, I will repay thee. We need to have this kind of compassion towards one another. That we're willing to go out of our comfort zone. Out of our financial comfort zones, maybe. To help someone in need. God help us to be more compassionate. And to be more like the Good Samaritan. You know, the Good Samaritan sounds a a lot like... How Jesus Christ is for us. How this good Samaritan, how God had compassion on us and he, he sees our wounds and he's seen the need that we were lost and we were dying and going to hell. And he came down to the earth and he died upon the cross for you and for me. He heals our wounds and he takes such good care of us. And you know, because of what God What Jesus Christ has done for us, we should be willing to be more obedient, to serve more, to the the best of our ability. God, how can I serve you more? And God says, serve your fellow brothers and sisters. Have compassion upon them. We want God to use us, but yet we walk by people that we see every day that are wounded. God used me today, and yet we fail to see that he wants us to have compassion on the wounded, to tend to our fellow man. Thank you so much. Father, we just thank you for who you are, and we just ask that you continue to bless this radio station. Father, as they use it for your glory and for your honor to spread the word of Christ, the beautiful word of God, how powerful and wonderful it is. We thank you so much for your goodness, for your grace, and for your mercy. And Father, I pray that if there's someone listening to this program at this very moment that doesn't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, that that will make that a reality today. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And the Bible says in Romans 10, 13, that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. All you have to do is ask Jesus Christ to come into your life. Confess to the Lord God that you're a sinner and that you need Him to become the Lord of your life. The Bible says plain and clearly how to be saved. And Father, I pray that the person who just prayed that prayer right now, that they will become obedient to you. Not just being saved but being, not just being a hearer of the word, but being a doer of the word. Father, we bless your precious and holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello, dear friends. This is Pastor Nick Keller. and We're so very thankful that you took time out of your day to listen to today's podcast. We trust and pray that something was said to be a help and an encouragement to you. 
But let me also say, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, Jesus loves you so much that he died upon Calvary's hill for you. And there is a way to heaven, not a way that man thinks, but a Bible way. We first have to recognize our condition that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We have to realize sin's penalty. The Bible says for the wages or the payment of sin is death. We have to believe that Jesus died for our sins. See, he says, but God commendeth or showed his love toward us and that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. And then we have to place our trust in Jesus Christ as our savior. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So my friend, if God's dealing with your heart, confess him, ask him to be the Lord and savior of your life and to forgive you of your sins. And he'll come and make a change completely in your life. My friend, thank you so much for tuning in. God bless you.